They say it's pain in every rain Drop Well I'm waiting on this rain to stop If it's pain in every rain Drop When will this rain stop Cause it looks like my window pane Is shedding tears Shedding tears Tears falling down my window Down my window I've been interviewing a lot of people like from the streets to everybody told me that I met is like, yo, you the you the new voice of the city, you the voice of the people. You know, like a lot of people that are from New Orleans and stuff, like they don't they don't really give the raw New Orleans that that should be out there. And I think I fulfilled that. You thought Katrina was the worst thing that happened to us? You thought that FEMA money was enough? But we gotta get it by all means Trying to survive in the city of New Orleans So fuck yesterday, say yes to the day Because who knows what we gon' see tomorrow anyway Only Lord knows if we gonna die today So we living every day like Now some people chose to stay, you know, because Like for real, Katrina was a gift and a curse For real, because Katrina gave a lot of people opportunities That never even been outside of New Orleans to get from out of New Orleans you know, it gave a lot of people that didn't have jobs, jobs. They had to get a job. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people that used to just walk around with nothing, you know. When them checks and stuff came, now they got a car, they got their own house, they had this and that. You know what I mean? And, and like, I felt like that was the gift that Katrina gave to a lot of people in the city. You know, and a lot of those people, they, they, they fell in love with their new life. You know, so, so they didn't come back. You know, but then, of course, you know, they got some people that just couldn't, couldn't adjust to new habitats, you know, so it came back, you know, even when there was, even when there was nothing down here, you know, like, it still came back. Because, you know, we always had storms that were supposed to happen but never happened. So we always, we just looked at it like, oh, it ain't even about that. Oh, it's Category 5. Oh, we don't know what a Category 5 is. Oh, we ain't worrying about that. You know, they always saying that's going to happen and it never happened. Screen come on, <laughs> and it says, "If you're trapped in your house, do not dial 911." So we like, do not dial 911. Like, oh, it's real. <laughs> we got, we gotta get out, yeah. You know, like it's real. We gotta get out, yeah. And, uh, like at the time, you know, of course, like, you know, I, I was broke. I ain't have no money like that. You know what I'm saying? I was broke. Uh, I had a I had a couple of hundred dollars, like, but that ain't nothing, you know. When you got a whole family of people with you, you know, I had a couple of hundred dollars. Uh, my little brothers, you know, they had some some dough, but we only had one car. <laughs> you know, what I mean? one car, a two door money, old money Carlo, like not the the new money car, no, the old two door money Carlo. You know what I'm saying? And we had to pile up in there with clothes. You know what I mean? A, a couple guns, you know, and, and like that was our that was my first time ever really having to drive like really, you know, on the road. Man, when I came back, you know what I mean? Like they had the uh, the walk of the water had been had went down by then, you know. But they still had to, you know, you could still see the line of like where the water was, like how high the water was. We went in there, you know, just to like to scope everything. I went in there. You know, we had to, you know, of course, you know, throw all up the old mattresses and all that shit out. You know what I mean? We had to throw all that out, you know, when it got when it got some more mattresses and stuff and put it in there. And we was back in there. You know what I mean? For real, like me and my brothers and stuff like that. Like, we was right back in there. For real. Like, we was back in there. For real. Like, with, with no power. With, you know what I mean? For real. You know, I come back today because and no matter what, I always come back because this is where my home is at. This is where my family at. This is where my friends is at. Yeah, so uh, how you feel about the development of the neighborhood? Do you feel like the neighborhood is even being developed? Like, real talk. Like, you, you feel like it's being developed? Because from what I see, only thing I see being developed, man, and, and stuff, I see a lot of houses painted differently. You know, well, stuff like that. The only development I'm seeing and getting from it is us. Exactly, and, that, and that's and that's what I'm saying. Back. But and that's what I'm saying. Like it's like, ain't is the money not coming from like the government or the, no. you know, or the or the, or the stuff like that? Like it, the money is coming from our pockets. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Like these these are our people, 
that stay in their own home that get out there and go out and buy the paint and the paint brushes and paint their own houses and you know, putting money up to fix their own houses up and stuff like that. See, with the, you know the money that they did here, bro, it wasn't much. You mm -hmm. understand? Then the little money that you get, you you must have forgot about the people every day living. They have mm -hmm. to still live, and the little money that you give us may be enough to get something started, but not finished. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole thing. They always start things. Look at the streets. They'll start them, but never finish them. Yep, yep. I remember, look, look, we was in a, we was in a conversation yesterday, and, uh, and, and, and the guy was saying about how, you know, they fixing the streets and stuff, and I was telling them, and I was like, man, like, where I'm, where I'm always, where I'm at, like, the streets are still messed up. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, the yeah. streets are still messed up. Like, you can't, you can't speed, you can't even do a good, <laughs> a good, uh, yeah, a good 20 <laughs> miles an hour. And you know what I'm saying? I'm just through it out messing with the car, man. Like, yeah, man. What it's you think crazy. about it is where they fixing them at. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. They fixing them around the business districts, uh -huh. you know, in the upper class districts. Yeah. But these here, look at our hood. Right. They barely get the grass cut. Right. But the city would go out of places and. Hey, grass don't really even need cutting, but it's cut. <laughs> yeah. The money that they have, they put them in all the wrong places. They see all these, how, if you look at, our city never looked like this. If our city was like a year it was, this street would be filled with people. And not just yeah. us. Now, you look around, there's no us. Where everybody went? Where they sent us. We ain't choose to go where we went. They mm. just put us there. It's like they had control over everything. For real. And it, it literally and mentally messed up a lot of people's minds. Mm. And how many people can't fall and say, I'm fucked up? Mm. Nobody. They feel like nothing is going to be done about it. I'm behind it with you, I'm fucked up. Mm -hmm. I'm fucked up. I'm sorry about it, but I'm really fucked up. For real. I lost family. Still looking for some of my cousins. Mm. You know? And you think this right? How could you just lay there and just put us anywhere? You know? It's crazy. Why not lay there and take the, all this money that you have? Red Cross beam and all this shit, and really put it to use. Hmm. The, the crime going, then you send them through here. This is a crime. We being abused. Well, well. Film. So do me a favor, don't do me no favors. Don't do me no favors. Do me a favor, don't do me no favors. That shit get you to you later. You can't pay no bills with no favors. That's why them youngsters and older guys do what they do in the streets. We don't have them opportunities that we need. And they're not giving us anything. So we gonna get it. People are still fucked up. Yeah. Because every time they see them walkings and everything and they say, but they ain't fixed that house yet. See 924 today, that's September 24th. You feel me? You know the zero. That stands for wasn't nobody's found in the house, thank God. Actually, I was locked up for Katrina, so I don't want to go there, but. So how it was, like how it was said, in that when you was locked up? Too, so. <laughs> like, all right, so you was locked up during the storm, like how it was in there? Oh, man, man, I ain't eat for seven days in there. Yeah? I ain't know what I was going to live or die. So, I'm proud. I mean, that's Actually, crucial. I was like a refugee. So. I'm bro. I mean, who was gonna feed us? <laughs> the deputies had fleas. We huh. left there by ourselves. Mm. You know? That's we had crazy. To get out we live in there, and they ain't had nothing in there. Huh. I mean, we had a little commissary, but once that ran out, there was nothing but cookies. So. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah,
That's crazy, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, the fights over cookies. Oh, yeah, of course. You stabbing over some cookies. <laughs> of course, man. For real. Because everybody trying to eat something. Everybody trying to eat something. For real. Yeah, for real. Because they were saying that, like, the levers blew up. Like, they blew up the levers. Like, they didn't say, like, like the levers that. broke. They, like, I believe that because you're not going to have damn near the whole city that stayed back say They heard a boom. Everybody not going to uh -huh. lie. Everybody yeah. not gonna tell that tale. I know, cause I heard it from so many like different people. Like we just heard a big boom, and you know, all of a sudden they saying the levers broke and, and stuff it like was, that. It, like it that's was, crazy. And, and I, but like I said, I believe in my heart of hearts that that's what actually happened. They blew the levers to save certain parts of the city. It was so crazy <laughs> though, because you had, I mean, the city was in complete turmoil. Like just imagine. You have people hollering, screaming, you know, stuff like that. And we just see all kinds of shit. Like, Canal Street was messed up. Water everywhere, people running around. People can't find people and stuff like that. But our journey didn't begin until we left and went to the convention center. That's when everything got kind of yeah. nasty. But um, we had to wade yeah. back through that water, got to the Superdome, and that's where we dipped out. And they took us to Dallas. Yeah. When we got to the Superdome, I yeah, said, it was oh, It was crucial in that dome, man. Huh? And people was getting raped. Um, they beat the, well, the, the guy that raped the little girl, they beat him and threw him over the, over the little overpass. Yeah, um, yeah. And actually it was so crazy because they actually stumped him till his eyes popped out his head. Mm -hmm. Over the overpass. By being 10 years later, you know, you think things change, like it's getting better or stuff like that? Getting better. <laughs> I mean, so? what, what, the things that hmm. didn't change, is that, you know, we had six flags. We had certain things we can actually do. Right. You know, that's, we had clubs that's where true. we didn't really have that's to. That's true, six flags. Like, you know, we had six, yeah, flags. six flags. Well, it was Jazzland first, then six flags. You know, we had things mm -hmm. like that. You had your pokes, you know, you had uh, little camps for kids and stuff yeah. like that. We don't have nothing now. And mm -hmm. that's why the crime is like it is now. We don't have nothing. When Katrina came, man, I was sitting in my mom's house. You know, me and my mama. My brother, uh, my baby mom, you know what I'm saying? That was before she was my baby mama. The good thing about it, we was together, all the rest of our family, my mom, my sisters, niece, brothers, all of us was together. I think the community, it's not too much different, but it was better than Katrina. Yeah. You know, so you it, was, it, got too, you it got worse got to me it. after Katrina. Because uh -huh. it's more violent, more killing. More raping, Everybody more robbers. It's world. like it's so much going on now. It's too much of crime. But I yeah. thought after Katrina hit, things would have got a little better than what it was. But it seemed like it got even worse. I feel it was better before Katrina. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. now they just got every hood mixed up and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like she said, with the violence, because everybody mixed up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, like, fuck, I had to come home too, you know what I'm saying? Because I'd rather be uh -huh. here, you know what I'm saying? The situation I'm in is not then. I was there like that, you know what I'm saying? So I had, like, I was missing home too at the same time. They could be yeah. homesick, you hear me? Just yeah. thinking about what's going on in New Orleans when you out there, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I'd rather be an out there than out there, you know what I'm saying? All right. Nah, we wasn't in the city because basically, my stepdad was working for Jet, the, you know, like kind of like RTA, like the bus service across the river. Mm -hmm. So they basically gave each driver their own bus for like evacuation purposes. And you know, us, my mom and my dad, you know, and some other of my family, some of us on the bus and some of us followed in the bus okay, in the car. Yeah. So I went to school in Dallas. That was a whole different story. Cause <laughs> I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was like, you know, they was upset with us or, you know, but like it just was, it got bad. Like I remember one day that really was bad. Um, somebody in my class was from New Orleans and he read the book and it was like New Orleans people scared to take showers because of flashbacks. It popped off in the classroom. Like once he read that and actually who wrote it, it just was crazy because like, you know, like we, like if, if it was if it was a change, like, you know, we'd embrace somebody if y'all, you know, had a, a yeah, exactly. catastrophe like that, y'all came to our city. Exactly. Cause they really, they really looked at us as refugees, refugees. and that's what's crazy. That yeah, we from the same that's what's crazy. country we from, as y'all. Yeah, we from the same country, but y'all looked at us as refugees. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like that's that's crazy. Yeah, it really was. Like, it, it, it really was. It's like how did we just get labeled as refugees when all it was is like the same thing like when. Uh, the tornado is hitting Oklahoma. He wasn't calling them refugees, but it's the same thing happened. It's just a, a natural a natural disaster. 
then everybody would be misplaced. I think, I think things changed for the worse as far as like the people wise, because I feel like this city, like looking forward to the into building the city more opposed to yeah. the things around it. Like as far as like you know like parks for like kids and like certain homes. Like I live in New Orleans East right now, and probably like majority of my blocks still have houses that hasn't been touched since Katrina. Yeah. So it's like instead of putting in money to where more people could come from other states and spend money in the city, why not put money into our cities? It's a tale of two cities. Uh, the, the great playwright August Wilson, uh, in his, uh, one of his play, great play, plays, Two Trains Running, he talks about the duality of life. New Orleans is no different. Uh, when we talk about New Orleans coming back, yeah, there's a train on the track where New Orleans is doing well, where people are doing well. I mean, there's a, but there's a train on another track, especially for people who live in communities like the Lower Ninth Ward and Tremere and Central Central City, where the train is going in the other direction. Uh, and one of the greatest uh, tragedies is that, not that, in many cases it was, in the beginning it was that people couldn't come back and it was difficult for them to come back. Now one of the great tra tragedies is that it's been difficult for people to stay. You know, uh, home prices are 46% higher than they've ever been. Uh, average rents going from uh, five and four, five and six hundred dollars to almost a thousand dollars a month for broke down, ragged properties. Uh, that's the great tragedy. That's the other story in New Orleans right now. Like, what could we do? What do, you, what do you think we could do to make this city better? The reestablishment of the people, man. Uh, an effort to bring them, to bring them back. Mm -hmm. uh, an effort to fix the infrastructure. You know, uh, well, you can talk about Desire, Florida, Lower Nine. We not, we may not have been rich, but yeah. we, we was rich in family. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, know, and that's what a lot, a lot of people been saying a lot too. Like, you know, we, we had family. Like a lot of us, we were family. All of our families knew each other. You know, yeah, like we, you know, you and I were just jibbing. People, we all, all we know, we, all, we, yeah. they all know each other. Yeah. You know, I'm older than yeah. you, but all the old heads yeah. knew each other. You knew from yeah. across the canal yeah. to, to up to uh, Maison Street, up to Desire, mm -hmm. up, to, up, to, up to Alpha. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, those families, those families in the, from, in the upper nine and lower nine had been there for generations. Exactly. You know, and yeah. they, they populated those areas. We learned about home ownership. Mm -hmm. Our neighbors weren't beautiful, but you know, in, 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 the, in the Desire Project, the Desire Project was special because you had four bedrooms. Mm -hmm. So there were people who lived in the neighborhood, but they wanted that project apart because they wanted yeah, that four bedroom. They was tired of yeah, jamming yeah, up the in the design, room with all their the brothers and sisters. The biggest project Absolutely. in the city. Absolutely. You know, so the, 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 so the potholes in the craters now, like over there on Higgins, man, over there where they're doing Delgado, yeah. they got to fix that stuff, man. I if know. nothing else, just to make it right for us, to, 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 not that, only to come I back, was, but to stay home. I was, uh, was in the night well, yesterday for a minute. And I was just telling them, because they had this one cat the day before yesterday mm -hmm. was saying how, uh, yeah, they, they fixing the streets. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. I'm like, well, well not which one? Wild, man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't see which it. Street? So when we was in the night wall well, yesterday, I'm like, look at this. You can't, right. you can't even do right. a good 10 miles an hour up this street. But you know, kid, I think uh, having a celebrity like you, man, somebody that's mm -hmm. making a name in entertainment, I think doing what you do, that can help bring attention to where you come from. So the blessing right. is to see a young brother like you come back, you know. Of course, because you know, I feel like, you know, I, I gotta be, I gotta be the voice, you know, right. for the people because right. a lot of people, well, really, I, I started seeing that a lot of people really mm -hmm. do look up to me, mm -hmm. and a lot of people really will follow, follow my lead mm -hmm. as far as what I'm doing. So I want to turn anything that that that's negative, how people base us so much right. on negativity. Right. You know, I want to show that there is a positive side to us. We're the most positive, New Orleans people, we're the most positive people in the world because we, because we survived the negative. For real. And I tell folks, we're the greatest survivors. For real. In the history of the world. Yeah. You know, because we learn, yeah. we, we learn how to do it in spite of, you know, because it ain't never been fabulous for us, but we made it fabulous. <laughs> Straight up. You know? And like another question I wanted to ask, like, do you think, like, even after 10 years from Katrina mm -hmm. and everything, like, do you think things change? Like, do you think the city made any kind of progress? There's anything? always change. There's change yeah. when things stay the same. The question is, is it changing for the people, it's not changing for the people who stayed the same for, mm -hmm. and for people who got worse. Yeah, things have changed. There's a lot of New Orleans that's doing much better now. But you know, where we come from, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the key to whether they're doing better is if they're gonna invest in us mm -hmm. and invest in our communities. Mm -hmm. So right now, you know, I'm sitting here with Wesley T. Bishop, <laughs> you know, and like and like I like I told him, uh, it's just good to see someone else that represents the Nine Ward and a higher power. A lot of people who moved away don't have the opportunity to come back, you know. So mm -hmm. a lot of people who you're talking with, 
family, friends, you know, so that kind of thing is real, real important. Yeah. Uh, just today, you know, I was in Lower Ninth Ward and the first basic grocery store, a CBS, mm -hmm. you know, cut ribbon in Lower Ninth Ward. I'll be glad that it actually happened and we want to thank CBS for actually doing that. But doing yeah. this 10 years after Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. Yeah. And we still actually doing this. And it's crazy. It, 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 it took 10 years to just do that, though. And what, what's sad about it, you, you didn't have businesses who were willing to take the plunge and do it. Mm -hmm. So they need to see somebody else do it. Then say, okay, well, mm -hmm. I put my foot in the water. The water seems to be fine. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to come. You know, because like as you were saying, like they still got houses that look like the hurricane just hit. Mm -hmm. The Lower Ninth Ward was the largest concentration of homeowners in the entire city of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was that you had that, that, and most of those houses did not require that you had to have flood insurance. So you don't need flood insurance. My house is paid off so that when you when your house is washed away, you don't have that kind of money in your pocket to put it back yeah, in there. Exactly. You know, and so that's part of the reason why you have right now there are at least seven hundred vacant lots in the lower ninth ward. I had a bill about two, a year ago trying to get the people in the lower ninth ward first crack at buying those lots for a hundred dollars. We got to rebuild, we got to rebuild the Lord Night. Got Lord. to. You know, and if, who got else to. but the folks who live in there who have a vested interest in trying to make this whole piece work? Really? You know, so we just nobody but us. Man. Well, we just, I wish I knew about that. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> it, it, it didn't pass. We passed it through the House and the Senate, but it okay. had to go statewide. Oh, okay. And unfortunately, it got, we got about forty-one percent of the vote, so it didn't pass. Yeah. But uh, we're gonna keep pushing that. Well, now you know. Uh, let's take it back. Now I know. I know you're not specifically from the nine, but I know y'all had a house in the nine wall mm -hmm. before before Katrina and stuff like that. Like. Like, talk about that, like, like how it was, like, before. So, um, we had purchased our house that Friday, right before Katrina. Mm hmm And we went to closing, and actually, I bought some of my students for closing with me. That's mm -hmm. how I really was, just to show them, look, I came from the hood, but look at me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, they really felt that, too. So, we had purchased the house that Friday, and Saturday, we had schools on Saturdays also, so we bought new school and did things with them and then after that we had evacuated we left because mm -hmm. at that time i was pregnant i was like two months pregnant and i know i couldn't swim so i was like we gotta go you know so um we had left that yeah, sunday i can't morning. swim either don't feel bad <laughs> that's why i knew we had that's why i knew uh, we had to get out of there yeah <laughs> and so we left we went to georgia and we stood there well, a lot of my family, they experienced being in Superdome and my sisters and them. You know, it was it was really horrible. I had to break in stores and, and, and lock my motherfucking people in with clothes and wipes because that's how we were cleaning ourselves. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But fuck, you know? Survival of the fittest. Mm -hmm. What made you come back? Well, you know, money. Fuck. Work, you know what I'm saying? I ain't feel comfortable nowhere else making money, you know what I'm saying? So I came back to where the money moved, where I'm used to it moving at. So I came back to the city, you know? Where it's love, family, home. It's that same question, like, why you came back? And the first thing he says is because it's home. You know what I'm saying? New Orleans is home, man. It's family out here. For real. You know what I mean? Shit is real, man. Mr. Rogers, you ain't never come out of here. Yeah. Man, I miss me, Zant. Bring them ideas and can them days back where you don't have to be a barber to shave crack and you don't gotta be a starter. See, niggas put you in the game. Try not to get sacked. You pitching like a quarterback. Them people come, you better be prepared to run a full flat. Run a lot of traps. Katrina washed away all that. I love to see the day we get it all back. Man, I miss me saying, bring them ideas and can them days back. Where you don't have to be a ball, but a shave crack. And you don't gotta be a starter. See niggas put you in the game, try not to get sacked. You're pitching like a quarterback. Them people come, you better be prepared to run the four flat. Love the traps. Katrina washed away all that. I love to see the day we get it all back. Huh? Mr. Rogers never came to my hood. They're tearing down the street where I grew up. Uh, 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 I'm just reviving my hood. They're tearing down the street where I grew up. Oh, oh no, not in my hood. They're tearing down the street where I grew up. You, you couldn't survive.
Five and my hood. Now I'm from Kville, K.A. Chopper Town. Make like a tree and leave or get chopped down. Every corner is a stop sign. Stop now. Turn around or get turned out. See these churn going go shit. You think they getting turned down? You from where I'm from? Then turn this up loud. Ain't a Katrina song. Whole sad sing along. This that cold world shit. Keep your heat in your home. You don't gotta be from St. Louis to get your eagle on. Pull your desert eagle out. Then you start to squeeze it home. T-shirt with they saying. Rest in peace song. And on the back. Bring my people home. Man. They're tearing down the street where I grew up. Mr. Rogers never came to my hood. They're tearing down the street where I grew up. Uh, 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 I'm just reviving my hood. They're tearing down the street where I grew up. Oh, oh no, not in my hood. They're tearing down the street where I grew up. You, you couldn't survive in my hood. And I'm a straight street nigga. You can't tell. You don't hear my tales of all my niggas up in jail. Man, I'm tired of seeing all my people get killed. They tearing down the hood, but they ain't talking rebuild. It's like no matter how much we try, we fail. No matter how much I came up, I fail. It's all about getting up. We give it all we got, but feel like we don't give enough. You ain't original because you just ain't real enough. Oh, you a high head, I just might check your temperature. Bitch, I'm from where they go click, clack, and give it up. Get them back, don't rat, and guess we trust where I grew up. Huh? tearing down the street where I grew up. Mr. Rogers never came to my hood. They're tearing down the street where I grew up. Uh, 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 I'm just reviving my hood. You know what I mean? But not me being the voice of the city that, that really, it really inspires me to keep going and keep going because when you're doing music and you're struggling for so long and, and you're trying so hard to make it, you never see your progress because you're constantly working. But when you stop and you sit back and you go to talking to these people and you realize these people are actually listening to you, these people are actually following you, it, it makes you believe in what you're doing even more. So now you just, you gotta give them what they want, man. And what I want, I want the people to know about New Orleans, the real New Orleans. Not only just downtown Night Wall, New Orleans, but New Orleans as a whole, as the people, the real people, the real voice of the people.